Good morning, everybody. And I don't know if you watched the last segment of your business. Is it a garden or graveyard? In that session, I shared that I had a light bulb moment, if you will, that it should be separated into a four part series. So I want to honor that because many of y'all have said that you love that and you want to hear a little bit more. So I'm going to share this with you. And for me, this comes very personally to me um, because I'm going to share just really holistic, like honestly and holistically, like how I go through cycles of highs and lows and how to keep myself focused regardless of what the day brought before, even if there was wins. Isn't it amazing how you can have a win, major win in a day and then end on some type of low energy or low vibration at the end of the day because you get to thinking about one thing or uh, an action that somebody has done that what makes you question yourself. Uh, definitely, I understand that. So what I wanna do is go through the four points and I'm gonna talk about your mindset. Is it a garden or is it a graveyard? Because mindset and your soul is really the basis of who you are in your existence. So number one is plant. Plant. So when I talk about planting, and you see my little heart there, God, don't you just love my like elementary school drawing? But you plant. And when I talk about planting, you want to look over here and you'll see location, condition, and time. So let's talk a little bit about planting. So to plant your mindset in the best way possible, what you want to do is, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to share with you what I do. How about that? Um, what I do is every single day I have a ritual and that helps me be planted with the knowing that my day is purposeful and intentional for the best day that I can bring. So number one is I do have a location. Now you'll see behind me, I'm in a different location because I'm helping one of my authors with her book and we're actually creating some curriculum uh, for marketing. So I am in South Carolina at this amazing place. So anyways, but every single day I plant and I do it in a location. So that location usually is what I call my sitting room, my prayer room, my reflection room. I don't know what I would name it. Probably I'd name it my angel room because I have all these little angels there and inspirational saints. But I sit there and even before I go to bed, I have that room meticulous. So that way when I walk in, I'm walking in state knowing what my intention is. Even thinking about it, my back comes up, I'm like ready, I'm on fire and I'm like, okay. So that is my location where I know I'm going to do my first intentional work. Now, for me, I have a 15-year-old son, so he gets up at 5.30 in the morning because his bus comes at 6.35. And if any of y'all have teenagers, you know how hard it is to get a teenager up at some times, right? So I have to get him up at 5.30. Well, if I started my day at 5.20 or 5.15, I would not be able to plant into myself to be the best mom that I need to be or to be focused or intentional because sometimes he wakes up a little grumpy, right? So love him and he's a good kid, but he does wake up grumpy sometimes, all right? So if I was planted in grumpiness right out of the gate, right when I got out of bed, I would have a challenge. Um, not that, you know, you have all these gurus and mastery saying you don't have to take on other people's emotions and so forth, and I get that. We can also though control how we handle conflict and how we handle the ebbs and flows of other person's energy so we can stay true in our core and our spirit. So what I do is I plant myself in that location with the intention that I'm going to make a, a, a difference, okay? Now, we talked about condition, we talked about time. So I have my time scheduled at least an hour before he gets up. So many of y'all have asked me, how in the world do you get up at four or 4.30? When you are intentional of what you want that day to bring, it becomes very easy to master yourself to get up. 
Look at someone like Michael Phelps, who is just, you know, amazing, right? Um, coming back and uh, doing all the, the, the achievements that he did in the Olympics. Anyone who's ever studied him knows that the hours that he has put in, there's a video out there that's just amazing about that. And so I have that timeline that my goal is to get up anywhere between 4 and 4.45 every single day because I want to make sure that I have time. Now, the condition of that planting is for me, I number one, read my Bible. Number two, I always journal. Even if it's just a paragraph because nothing's necessarily coming to me. I wish I had my journal here in front of me, but I don't right now because I'd really holistically just show you, you know. Um, here we go. I'll just keep it real. So last night, um, I had an amazing day yesterday, and um, but I, and I've got the one conflict um, that I'm emotionally struggling with. Now you don't have to say, "Oh, I'm sorry," and I'm praying for you, Trish, and all that, you know, because I'm good. Because you see me, I am in state. I am planted, boom, boom, firmly in knowing that all I am is within me now, and I thank my Heavenly Father for my day, and I know what my day is going to be, purposeful. But we have those moments, right? So last night, as I was in my hotel room alone, and um, my husband didn't call me to say goodnight, my son didn't call me to say goodnight, and I'm sure that they were just busy, um, it did feel a little lonely, and, and it made me contemplate, you know, am I, uh, I sure hope I'm loved. I'm, I hope that I'm, um, the wife and mother that I'm supposed to be, you know, so I journaled that down. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is to be mindful of those dips. But you see, when you're planted in the right uh, steps of knowing how to take your day forward, it's going to be a lot more intentional of what you want the outcome to be. That's where I set my day. Now, the night before, I'll set my uh, action items and so forth. But I set what energy, what attitude, and really what my big why is. And my big why is helping people, and even if it's me, find the unstoppable warrior within themselves that is just beautiful, that lies within them, that someone else can't possibly uh, dig in and reach out so they can find it within themselves because that is the most beautiful thing. So last night as I journaled and then boom, I'm planted today, I found the word unstoppable within me. And so I share that with you because I know that some of you right now are going through um, a loss or you're going through a relationship crisis or you're going through um, a challenge with your child, whether it's they're struggling with their first um, nine weeks report card and you're wondering, how do I help them? I get it. I just want you to know from my heart, I totally, totally get it. So number two is fertilize, right? Fertilize. And we talked about this in the first series. So when I look at fertilize, I say schedule. So we covered that. I plant myself in a schedule. Now I will tell you throughout the day, I also do things to anchor and fertilize back into what I planted that day. So for me, it's music that helps me um, stay grounded and planted firmly in my root. I remember yesterday morning being at my house and cleaning the dining room table and the Whitney Houston song came to me, which, because the greatest love of all is happening to me. So I started singing that, right? And so that fertilized me to keep going further. And so I have songs. I encourage you to have a playlist that fertilizes back into you, that strengthens you in those moments during the day where you're you're realizing, oh, I'm having a little energy dip or I'm feeling like, oh, I can't pull this contract together or this proposal together, okay? And what do you fertilize yourself with? So one is those songs and two is uh, reading. I'm really mindful now of what I read. Now, for those of y'all who know me really well or you listen to all my um, teachings, you know that I am strongly rooted in the Word of God. And I have the John Maxwell Bible. I love it. Um, there's a link off my website if you 
you know, want to get it. Um, the reason why I like it is it ties into the mindset of leaders. And um, if you're a leader out there and this relates to you, sometimes don't you feel like you're kind of like your own island? That uh, not everybody gets you and they go, you know, why is that? Why is she so visionary? And why does, um, man, why is she like, you know, prospecting, you know, this movie producer, radio show or whatever, like weird, like big things, right? And if I share that with them, they go, what? You know, so I fertilize myself with uh, the word of God, and I also fertilize myself with other people that have achieved things that seemed impossible because of their unstoppability. And so that's what I fertilize myself with. And then I recognize the gaps of the awareness. So the thing that I do is if I notice that I'm having that dip or that gap, I take action of some kind. Uh, action would be me just videoing and sharing this with you today. And I know most videos get the best play with three minutes and under. But my intention is to do longer videos because y'all have seen a lot of my short ones to help just if this helps one person pour into it. So my gap is the awareness of I can do a video today, I can take action. Um, I'm at a hotel. They don't happen to have a workout room, which is really weird because mostly they do most hotels do um, but this one doesn't so how can I take energy today so I googled a park um, I'm gonna be mindful of my eating for the gaps because I want to fertilize not only my body not only my my spirit to keep me core but also what I eat and all of that coming in because if I have a lapse which I have um, as an emotional eater and, and battling that for over 20 years and never really sharing that with anyone um, I know where my gaps are, and that's something that I even journaled about last night because we're not perfect, you guys. We're not perfect. That's why these four things can help you just to keep moving forward. So as I say that last night, and I had a terrible food choice, and I didn't do what I needed to do, and here I am down 30 pounds, and I'm working out, and I'm intentional, and I know where my triggers are. Um, feeling that little bit of loneliness and so forth. And again, don't feel bad for me. I'm just kind of sharing really st straight from my heart. Number three comes up, don't stop. So instead of beating myself up, I went to bed last night. I did text my friend Mark and I was like, man, I'm really struggling emotionally. You know, I am feeling like, man, am I just, am I really like doing, am I just enough? Like, am I uh, achieving what I need to achieve? Am I doing you know, why am I not getting the fruition? You know, I'm, I, I don't see this necessarily happening fast enough. And the thing is, you cannot stop because what you plant every day and what you fertilize could be right below the surface and you don't see the catalyst behind it. I think about yesterday, I haven't written a song in months. And Stephen Furtick at my church ended up singing this uh, chorus. And when he did, these lyrics poured out of me. And before I knew it, I had written a song in pencil on a piece of paper. And I felt that God was calling me to drive it down to his corporate office. Y'all, they have like 20,000 members. They probably are not going to even see that song. They're probably not going to even hear me. Um, but you know what? Maybe, it, maybe something will come from it. And it may not be the outcome that I would hope it for to be or the outcome of, it, of something. But maybe, just maybe, even if it was the girl, Morgan, that I sang to in the corporate office and Elise hearing it, uh, touch something in their lives that day because I believe that there's no accidents. I didn't stop. Don't stop no matter what. Even if you're feeling challenged, even if you're feeling like, man, my deals are not coming through. Man, my commissions are terrible. Man, I'm not making my quota. And here it is almost the third week of October. Man, I haven't done enough bills to cover payroll. Man, you cannot stop. Look at where you're planted. Look at the activities behind it. Look where you are fertilizing because my friend as a leader you must fertilize yourself before you can carry it as a leader to other people okay I mean my goodness don't stop you never know that green that is just around the corner and during times 
when things start to grow and things start to plant, I'll notice this. I'm in state and I'll be like, bam, I got on a radio show. Bam, I'm on this radio show. Boom, you know, I got this call. And all of a sudden, weeds start coming into my brain. Oh, you're not, enough. You're not good enough. Oh, man, Trish, the camera puts on 10 pounds. You know, you look really chubby. Um, um, I'm saying um because I'm thinking. Oh, and then a lot of people email, and then all of a sudden I want to chat with you because they want to pick me up, which is wonderful. I love that, but I have to be mindful of, you know, God's only given me a certain many hours in the week, so I have to really be disciplined and mindful of my priorities. So when I say about pruning is as flowers bud, for flowers to continually come up in where you've planted, where you've fertilized, where you haven't stopped the watering, you haven't stopped the process, things will grow. But you cannot rely on your successes of five years ago because then it will turn into a graveyard. You cannot even rely upon your successes of a month ago. And that's, isn't that like ick? Now, I'm not saying that you put yourself down or whatever, but what I'm saying is, is that there are activities that you might have to prune for your business to prosper. I was on a coaching call yesterday and I was talking to someone who does, who was helping in, in a certain area of her life. And when we looked at the percentages, 40 to 50% of her time was going into this energy that did not, one, uh, bring an outcome, two, uh, bring the outcome that really supported uh, I will say God's calling on her life, her purpose, what keeps her up at night, like her drive, what her, what her real passion is. She has to start pruning and, and being in alignment. So I helped her figure out what are, the, what are the two things, and it could be any two or three or four, it depends. It depends on your recipe. But is this activity satisfying this? And satisfying this, if it is, that's an activity. If this activity does not serve these areas to get me to the next step, to closer to my outcome, guess what? They need pruning. And there may be certain times of the year that you want to prune. This is a perfect time in fourth quarter, and I hope this... Uh, this video can stay evergreen so you can use it throughout the year because it doesn't matter if it's first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, or fourth quarter. But I talk about this in fourth quarter. I think I just said third. But I talk about this in fourth quarter because we're, we're, we've been finishing the harvest and we're going into the winter. One of my friends yesterday just said, you know, I always have hated winter because it's cold and everything. And I told him, I said, my friend, I feel that God is saying that in the middle of winter, spring will be in action. I said, I, I totally don't even know what that is. And we started brainstorming. We started thinking about, wow, we could actually bring spring into the winter by doing these conferences and these teachings and these teleclasses just to bring forth that planting and that fertilizing on a continual basis. So spring is better than ever before. And also the weeds. You've got to think about the weeds. The weeds is the chatter. I let the weeds get to me last night. God's made me for who I am. I'm beautiful just the way I am. You're beautiful just the way you are. And if somebody can't see that, then they have their own issues. And their energy is something that you can't fix. Only someone who can step into their place can fix their self, which is why, again, I'm gonna recap. For you to be in your core, straight in your core, you must, number one, you must plant, okay? Where are you being planted today? What's your focus? Where is your schedule? Where is your thinking spot? Are you journaling? Are you reading positive words? Are you praying? This is not about religion. This is about your spiritual self. Two, are you fertilizing? 
Are you truly fertilizing? Are you putting things in place for you to continually be re, re-rooted in the strength of who you are? Is it music? Is it coloring and process? Yes, I brought my coloring book with me last night. I do that. Why? Because sometimes I need to just have quiet and stillness. And the quiet is when the Heavenly Father can speak to you. Okay? And then number three is don't stop. Just don't stop. Even when things seem dark and you're like, I just can't go on. Oh, my marriage is so struggling right now. Oh, my kids are just not thriving in school and we don't have money for a tutor. Or I'm just so unhappy in my job. I, does my boss even recognize me? Whatever it is, whatever it is, don't stop. If you are working the actions of being planted and fertilized, And the thing is, my friend, if you don't, please reach out to a coach. It doesn't have to be expensive. It might just be for six weeks. But I'm telling you right now, if that can help you shift in your core that touches every part of your life, then I don't even know what could be more valuable, honestly. So many people hire business coaches. And and I am a business coach. I'm actually an executive coach, and I've gone through intensive training way before John Maxwell. I've been doing it for years. Vlogged over, uh, I've lost count now, over 2,000 hours of uh, coaching. I should really read, read. probably it's more than that. And, and, And here's why I say this. Because what I usually find, that when there's business situations and struggles when it's the leader the small business owner the commission salesperson the plan they want the shiny red object of fix me fix me fix me fix me fix my business fix my business fix my business now it's the economy it's my people and everything guess what it most of the times is it's the weeds in the garden of the limiting beliefs. It's the priorities and the consistency of what you're planting and starting your day every day. It's the releasing of not stopping, but also being awareness of the gaps, of the dead wood, of the fear of possibly needing to let someone go in your business or changing something within yourself or growing something within yourself. So for me, and this is just for me, and I'm just saying this, and I know this video is a little longer. I feel like somebody needs to hear this today. If you're hiring a business coach just for the numbers, but this is speaking to you, it's because Something else is offline, off kilter, and you, my friend. And it's not that you're broken. You might have a little kink. That's okay. I have kinks. You may have a little limp like a sprain. But the thing is, is that when you get strong in your core, and you know what your purpose is, and I have chills right now, and you know what you're put here to do. Sometimes you don't even know. You don't even know. And you're like, fix my numbers. Fix my sales. But I don't even know why I'm doing this. That is why my heart is speaking to you. Because it is an integrated blend. You cannot improve your business until you start improving and growing into the core, into the mind, the heart, the soul, the body, the spirit to be put forth. Everything is in alignment like a DNA. And when you treat one symptom instead of the whole situation, it's gonna be a challenge. 
So those are the four things for you in your spiritual walk. And I did cross it over to business again because everything, I have a word called interfusion. I did it for marketing. What I'm realizing though, interfusion is the blending and the weaving and the mixing. And that's exactly what has to happen for your best life to happen. Everything has to be interfused. So bless you today. And please comment if you like this. I know this was from my heart. Trisha Andresen, you can like my page on Facebook. Be unstoppable now. Be unstoppable now. And join me. Share with me your experiences. And if you need me, you know I'm only a message away. I am only a message away. Even if it's a prayer. Even if it's an unspoken one. Whatever you need. God bless you today. Now, I'm going to go fertilize myself with my coffee, reading my Bible, and my continued journaling. So, bye. I love you guys.